A very good afternoon to you. My name's Rob Rowe, I'm the director of Gospel for Grampian, and welcome along to the Community Elements Show. Now, Community Elements Show is... We are a Gospel Community Radio Station. So first of all, we want to make sure that people are able to live life to the full, that they, we can engage, equip, and enable communities to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. So we proclaim the gospel, and we also work with believers and other organisations to point the way to where people might get help. So in this way, we can make sure that people are engaged, they are equipped, they are able to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. Now we don't say that people have to accept Christ, merely that they should get an opportunity and decide for themselves and whatever we do to make sure that they are able to live life to the full. And this is what we're going to do in this program. And one of the ways we can do this is to encourage people through uh, highlighting good news stories. And we start off this show with Brian's good news. Brian is one of our volunteers. He's into his 70s and he comes in each week having compiled four good news stories and sometimes a few more as well. He gets most of these good news stories from the Evening Express and sometimes from other journals as well. This uh, crop of good news stories is no exception. And from this, I've compiled a subject matter which we can go into more depth on. So have a little listen to Brian's good news. This is Gospel for Grampian and it's our Community Elements show. And we're starting off today with Brian's good news. Well, first of all, hello, Brian. And hello, Rob. Welcome once again to the show. It's been a bit of a break once again, but good to have you back. It's tremendous that we have returned again. It is indeed. And uh, first story, I believe it's on your marks, get set, go. Indeed. (laughs) Gym staff have set off from Aberdeen as they take on a national relay for a mental health charity. Teams of workers will run and cycle the length of Britain with the aim of raising money for Mental Health UK. They have already amassed their initial target of £250,000 and are now aiming to raise as much as possible for the charity. The first team of cyclists, who were to hand over the relay baton to the next group when they reached Dundee, set off from the most northerly pure gym on Shiprow in Aberdeen yesterday, destined for its southernmost facility in Plymouth, accompanied by Scotland's most successful Olympian, Sir Chris Hoy. Sir Chris said, My hero, the cyclist Graham Oubry, has had mental health issues his whole life. I met him when he was a world champion and a world record holder, and it struck me that poor mental health can strike anyone at any time. It doesn't discriminate. A number of friends and teammates have struggled, and it's important we talk about it and take away the stigma. The guys have done brilliantly. I am really, really pleased to have been able to take part. The cycle is expected to take seven days to complete. The team completing the Aberdeen to Dundee leg were waved off by Lord Provost Barney Crockett. He said, It's a really inspirational event. In the North East, we are at the forefront of the fight against mental health and it is really good to see this sort of thing happening. It's raising so much money for a great cause, but it's also raising awareness and encouraging people to be more active, which can help. Pure Gym Chief Executive Humphrey Gobbled said, It has been great to see colleagues come together and raise such a large sum of money for an important cause. The aim of this relay is to challenge and unite all Pure Gym colleagues in celebrating of the business that they have created and the work that they do to make the UK healthier and to raise money and awareness for a great cause. Brian Dow, Managing Director of Mental Health UK, said, I'd like to give a huge thanks to all of the team members at Pure Gym for their successful fundraising effort and everyone at Mental Health UK wishes them the best of luck as they complete this Herculean task.
A set of weights, a sleeping bag and a bag of Nerf guns was found by groups taking part in a 24-hour litter pick. Hundreds of black bags were filled as volunteers set out to make Aberdeen sparkle again by collecting rubbish. Organised by Aberdeen City Council, 548 participants took part with 320 bags filled across 46 cleanups. Volunteers have been praised for their hard work by operational delivery convener John Wheeler. During the litter pickup, groups found a set of weights, a vacuum cleaner, sleeping bags, and garden chairs. Pupils at Kitty Brewster Primary School found a bag of Nerf guns on their cleanup. Groups, schools, businesses, and organisations took part in the event. This year's event, held last Thursday, was started by ACC's Environmental Services team near the River Dee, followed by the other groups every hour. Councillor John Wheeler said, It's great that so many groups came out to help clean our city, making it look sparkling clean. Our staff work hard to keep the city clean and tidy, but, unfortunately, we can't be everywhere at the same time. So, the work carried out by these communities, groups, workplaces and individuals made a big difference. We'd prefer if people didn't litter, as it's unsightly and is bad for the environment. We are all responsible for not littering in the first place. This effort can be as simple as picking up litter outside of front gates every day or a bigger effort such as litter picks carried out by dozens of groups throughout the year. These organised events really do make a huge difference to local communities and help foster a bit of pride in our beautiful city. The event is part of the Clean Up Aberdeen campaign which encourages people not to litter in the first place. It also provides equipment for groups who wish to organise picks. A northeast woman has hailed a charity for turning her life around as she prepares to start university. Emily Barclay battled anorexia for most of her teenage years and spent months of her time in hospital before she was eventually admitted to the VSA St Albans Care Home last autumn. However, the volunteer gymnastics coach, who is originally from Aberdeen's West End, credited the charity for with helping her overcome the condition. She is now set to realise her lifelong ambition of studying physiotherapy when she begins classes at Robert Gordon University after the summer. Emily said, Pretty much all the way through my teenage years I struggled with the disorder and I was in and out of hospital a lot. It ended up becoming a cycle because I would be in hospital for a few months then go home and although my parents tried hard they couldn't really cope. It got worse and worse and I ended up being in hospital for two years before we found out about St Albans. When I first went, things were really tough, but the staff helped me so much. It was all about what helped me and then fitting in around that. Them supporting me made me realise I needed to get better. They trusted me and were there for me when I needed them. Emily is now looking forward to beginning her course in September and is keen to make the most of the opportunity. She said, This has been the goal for a long time. I have had the chance to go in in the past, but I have always been too unwell. There was always something stopping me, but now I am finally going to be able to go and do it. It's been my dream for such a large part of my life and I'm so excited for it. There's something else the staff at VSA have helped me with when I needed them. They have encouraged me and helped me to get well enough to be in a position where I can go to university and do things other young people do. I am so grateful for the support I've had from St Albans. Because of them, I am able to go and live a normal life and enjoy it. The hospital made me physically well, but being in St Albans has made me emotionally well again, and I can't thank the staff enough for that. I never thought life could be so good. St Albans manager Gail Smith said, Emily has done so well to get to this point. She has reached a stage where she feels as though she is fully in control. She feels her time at St Albans has given her the confidence she needs to move on. She has done the majority of work and to get to this point herself, so she has to be given the credit for all of that. She's living her life to her full potential and it's amazing to see what she's going to do.
under the heading of this next uh, item with Tuchters and Tunzers figure out fit word is fit. How well did you cane your Doric races? Proud teachers and tunesers alike are being challenged to take on a BBC quiz-style game which tests the knowledge of the North East dialect. The game, which has been created along the lines of popular show Call My Bluff, will see members of the public unravel the derivations of Doric words and phrases. The hunt is now on for competitors keen to take part. Teams of three are being sought for the competition, which will involve them battling it out with local heats throughout September and to be so crowned as one of the winning teams. The two best teams will then compete against each other in the final in October. The competition is being run as part of the Across the Grain Festival, a month-long celebration of local culture which takes place in a range of different venues across Aberdeenshire throughout October. The festival was launched by Aberdeenshire Council for the first time last year. A spokesman for the local authority said, Live Life Aberdeenshire Libraries will be providing all the words with brief definitions. It is up to each individual if they want to elaborate on any of the definitions we provide. So, if you have a love of the Doric dialect and would like to take part in the quiz, contact your local library. If you are an individual and would like to take part, the library service can find you a team to join locally, so please still get in touch. It is free to enter and open to all ages. More than 50 events will be held during October in more than 15 communities across Aberdeenshire. This includes an opportunity for members of the public to hear excerpts from Handel's Messiah, sung in Doric, a workshop at the Loch of Strathbeg Nature Reserve, a community heritage and song writing project at Bochenhaven Heritage Centre and Doric booking events for youngsters at libraries. The closing date for submissions for the competition is August 19th, with the final taking place at Aden Theatre at Aden Community Park near Mintlaw on October 10th from 7 to 9 p.m. It is hoped the festival will continue to grow with more Doric celebrations on offer so that it can run every year. More information can be found by visiting lifelifeaberdeenshire.org.uk forward slash libraries. We have a scripture text today taken from Mark chapter 13 verse 31 where Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Well, I would almost be tempted to come, indeed, to the Doric. The first, because it's something we don't... Languages, especially local languages, are often fast dying out in many parts of the world, and it's really good that you have competitions like this which are designed to keep the language going keep it alive now i confess brian that there's certain doric words for like gloaming i thought roman in the gloaming not so much dusk as it is here that's what it means gloaming is dusk but i thought it was a a valley when it was overcast just yes, roaming indeed. roaming through a valley just a sort of like a, a wilderness heather clad valley with lots of uh so the, that well, would be one way well, of uh, bringing it out clearer to the people in the competition. Yes. But roaming in the gloaming, which is dusk, where well, you could be anywhere roaming in the gloaming. I mean, yesterday was particularly gloaming. Oh, indeed. Um, it really was, especially yesterday evening. Um, now, did you realise that story meant dust, uh, dusty and fantouche, fancy elaborate, muckle is big, and shilpit is not a rude word. It means feeble. Bert, apparently Bert is to spin around. Hmm. Yes. And troch. Beryl. A bosey. A bosey is a hug. Yes. So the, these are interesting. Yeah, I like boseys. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. And so it's on now to the glitter pick clean up uh, that was had the other Thursday. Uh, I can tell you that there's some amazing numbers of people came out and 
have been working uh, to pick up litter here in Aberdeen. 321 bags were picked up, but actually that's actually quite a bit less than the amount of bags from previous years. So I think the message is getting through. Uh, if listeners are interested, uh, they can actually listen in to an interview that I had with Stephen Shaw. Uh, and Stephen Shaw is the environment manager. His name is not mentioned here, but uh, he actually started off these glitter picks with his two young children. Mm. Um, now, one of the children, I think it was Lewis, had actually uh, suggested the name glitter pick because it puts the sparkle back into Aberdeen. That's why it was done. And so the name glitter pick actually came about. Very appropriate. So it really, you know, absolute genius uh, for coming from uh, a child as well. So that's really good. Now, I was actually going to mention uh, that, of course, the amount of litter contains a, little, a lot of plastic. That plastic uh, can get into the environment. Uh, and there's a plastic bag that my colleague, because I work for Aberdeen City Council Ranger Service, my colleague Duncan uh, actually picked up a plastic bag that obviously had been there for a little bit of time, judging by uh, the grime that was on it. But other parts of it were showing still just the, the same shiny um, look as it had when it was new. And uh, they, they reckon that the plastic bag may take... 25, 30, or perhaps even more years to break down. And of course, when it does, it breaks into smaller and smaller bits. And they, these bits can get into the sea, can get into the food chain, into the human food chain, mark you. Mm. Uh, and there's a... No, there's a fish and chip shop I heard about recently in Leicester that had actually closed down. They closed down uh, not because of anyone telling them they had to close down this was because they had an eye-opening experience when they went on a fishing trip and discovered the amount of plastic that was actually inside the fish that they've been caught so just imagine if you take that fish dip it in batter and pop it into uh, the fish fryer that plastic would melt and it would then coat the inside of the fish and then we would eat it and then well you can only imagine what that might yes so these are something that uh, these owners didn't want and uh, they took a responsible look at it and they're now going to open a restaurant which is plant based mm. but they don't want to have plastic and it just shows that we can all have a, a role in picking up uh, litter and plastic itself becomes a very important role becomes an accelerant for fire uh, because if you get a lot of plastic it can make uh, any fire that is close by worse so when you have litter mm -hmm. bin fires it builds up huge amounts of toxins and fumes uh, and, and it's not good for the fire service either very true so uh, it's good good to go and keep picking litter up and uh, those who turned out for the litter pick were really good now let's get on with uh, uh, Sir Chris Hoy and uh, Barney Crockett and indeed the folks, good folks from uh, the Pure Gyms who are carrying out mm. this cycle ride to raise money for mental health charity, Mental Health UK here in the UK and try, uh, cycling all the way from Aberdeen down to Plymouth. That's some, as they put it at the end of the article here, it's a Herculean task. It really is. Uh, they were uh, taking it in, in turns. Yes. But it's a, um, if you were younger, mm, would you try that? Uh, I did. You did? <laughs> well, I once went on a, a, a cycling holiday from Aberdeen to the northwest of Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, but all the way down to Plymouth? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, is that not something I would easily do, but hats off to them for, for, for doing that. Mm. Uh, and at least it's a relay race, so they, you know, it's not one person doing that whole distance. It is a relay race, and they can, uh, can do that. So it probably goes from uh, Aberdeen to Aberdeen down to Dundee, Dundee, and maybe they might do Dundee to Edinburgh, Edinburgh to uh, Newcastle, say? Possibly. Uh, and Newcastle to, I don't know, Leeds? 
that would be a really long way <laughs> uh, and then uh, Birmingham uh, and then London and Bristol and Plymouth I suppose it would go like it that it would be that's just a guest uh, route but no really really good and we'll certainly give mention to uh, Mental Health UK when we come to do the program yes so excellent and then then there's anorexia have you ever come across anyone with anorexia yourself indeed i haven't uh, and i suppose i don't want to either no i certainly wouldn't want to suffer from it but it's great that uh, uh, emily emily barclay here has now managed to overcome that but uh, through the immense help that she has received uh, from the Auden Centre. Mm -hmm. That's a fabulous help they gave her because she is not only able to overcome it uh, physically but emotionally as well. Because it is more mental health. It, it is disease. more uh, mental health uh, orientated, yes. And uh, so her achievement now is tremendous and what an encouragement that is to her. She's been suffering for so long and now she has released and it must be such a relief for her parents. Oh, <laughs> boundless relief. Mm -hmm. yeah, tremendous, actually. Which an, an encouragement for them. And, for, well, it's an encouragement for me to know that this sort of thing, like the Oban uh, Centre, uh, is available mm -hmm. uh, for people that need it. Uh, but oh, we don't want to need it, but... Mm -hmm. We're so grateful that uh, the Odin Centre is around to help people who do. Or, or indeed any of the the uh, organisations like Mental Health UK, yes. uh, Penumbra mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Sam H. Uh, these are all mental health charities that uh, um, help people. And uh, there's also for, for young people as well. So really, really good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Brian, can I thank you very much for that? And uh, can I ask you to do the scripture once again? Willingly. From Mark chapter 13, verse 31, where Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Amen. Brian, thank you very much for that, and we'll see you next week, bright and early. Same time next week. And so we come to the second of our community elements. And for this, we're taking an in-depth look at uh, the glitter pick that we mentioned uh, during Brian's Good News. Now, glitter pick was first started off by the Aberdeen City Council environmental team. Uh, lots of people took part in this, and the most influential person in that team is Stephen Shaw, who's the environment manager, and we'll get to hear a little bit from him at the end of this particular community element. Now, volunteers who took part in this big 24-hour litter pick, and it was uh, the other Thursday, across Aberdeen collected enough rubbish to fill hundreds, namely 321 bags. There were 548 participants in the Aberdeen City Council organised event and designed to help the city sparkle more in the summer months. Now, the whole idea of Glitterpick is to put the sparkle back into Aberdeen. And this was the idea of uh, Stephen Shaw's son, Lewis. In all, during the day, there were 46 cleanups. The more unusual items included a set of weights, a vacuum cleaner, sleeping bags, garden chairs, and to the delight of pupils at Kitty Brewster Primary School, during the litter pick, a bag of Nerf guns. Groups, schools, businesses and organisations took part in the event, which involves litter pick starting every hour over 24 hours from midnight to midnight. This year's event last Thursday, was started by Aberdeen City Council's Environmental Services team near the River Dee, and this then followed by other groups every hour. The other groups taking part this year included Friends of Walker Dam, the City Council's Countryside Ranger Service, Tree Team, 
Friends of Seaton Park, Middleton Park School, Riverbank Primary School, Kirkhill School, Hanover Street School, Cummins Park Community Flat, Airy Hall School, Friends of Victoria and Westburn Parks, Orchard, Orchard Bray School, which is a special needs school, Kitty Brewster Primary, Bright Bucksburn and Stonywood School, Heathery Burn Park Steering Group, the City Council's Environmental Strategy Team, Cove Community, RSPB, Dolphin Watch, Spirit Energy, Beavers, Red Moss Residents, Fit Like Joggers, King Corth Community, Sport Aberdeen, Friends of Sunnybank Park and Fitty Residents. The places in the groups were picked up litter and uh, that was from Riverside, Garth D, Torrey, Hazelhead Pitches, Ellen Road, Walker Dam, Den Burn, Maiden Craig, Hazelhead, Ward Garden, Seaton Park, Wellington Road, Asda, Bridge of Don, King Corth, Killydrone, Airy Hall, Victoria Park, Stuart Park, Cummins Park, Skatey Woods, um, Brumand, Elric Park, Broadhill, Torrey Battery, Cove, Greyhope Beach, Danburn, Garth D. Pitches, King Corth Hill, Alton Pitches and Lynx, and finally Fitty and the Beach. Aberdeen City Council's operational uh, delivery convener, Councillor John Wheeler, said it's great uh, that so many pe- groups came out to help keep our city sparkling clean. Our staff work hard to keep the city bright Uh, clean and tidy but unfortunately we can't be everywhere at the same time so the work carried out by these community groups workplaces and individuals makes a big difference would prefer if people didn't litter in the first place as it's unsightly and is bad for the environment and we are all responsible for not littering in the first place this effort can be as simple as picking up litter outside our front gates each day or a bigger effort such as litter picks carried out by dozens of groups throughout the year. These groups or organised events really do make a huge difference to local communities and help foster a bit of pride in our beautiful city. The event is part of the year-round Clean Up Aberdeen campaign, which encourages people not to litter in the first place, and also provides equipment for groups uh, wanting to organise a litter pick. For more details or to get help organising an event, call 03200292 or email cleanaberdeen at aberdeencity.gov.uk. More information is also available from Clean Up Aberdeen on Facebook or www.facebook.com forward slash clean hyphen up dot Aberdeen or from the website www.cleanupscotland.com. Now, if you want to find out uh, these details, then do uh, go and have a look at the post on our website is also available through Facebook as well. Now, we're going to let uh, Stephen Shaw, the environmental manager, have the last word. We no longer hear that, oh, it's the council's job to do that. It's not the council's job. We, we, we sweep the streets, we pick up litter, but it's everyone's responsibility to, to, to put a stop to that. And as I said earlier, if we can do that, then that £4 million can be spent on parks, play areas, green spaces, you know, lovely things rather than picking up litter. So I'd like to think that, that, that this campaign will build and build um, We've got more schools on board than we've ever had. We, we've 18 schools signed up to clean up Aberdeen, and but we know there's many more who, who do that. There are eco groups and um, green flags, etc. They're all on board with it. We've got councillors very supportive and, and championing this with us. This is Gospel for Grampian Gospel Community Radio for North Scotland. Engaging, equipping, enabling communities to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. We're coming on to our third community element and this is also something that uh, Brian picked up in his good news stories early on in the programme. Now for this, we're considering uh, the first news story that we had from Brian and that was about uh, the bikers 
uh, rather the cyclists uh, who were from Pure Gym cycling to do a relay race a cycle ride throughout the UK and to raise much money for Mental Health UK. Now the website is mentalhealth-uk.org. Let's have a little look at that website and uh, when you come to have a little look on our website uh, you'll see that there's already information for yourselves as to how you can actually support uh, mentalhealth-uk.org so let's have a little look about uh, mental health uk one in four people in the uk is affected by mental health problems every year and mental health uk bring together four national mental health charities with 40 years of combined experience to provide advice, information and support. So let's have a little look at these uh, mental health uh, different charities. Rethink Mental Illness is a charity improving the lives of people severely affected by mental illness through local groups and services, expert information and training and successful campaigning. Support in Mind Scotland and that aims to improve the quality of life of, uh, who's, of anyone whose mental health problem or mental illness has a serious impact on their life or the lives of others, including families, carers and supporters. Support in Mind Scotland delivers services to 2,000 people a year through 21 projects across Scotland. MindWise is a leading mental health charity in Northern Ireland and through their 30 key services, uh, Mental Health UK support the recovery of 9,000 people affected by mental health issues every year, including carers, families and children. They campaign for change and fight stigma and discrimination. Hafel is Wales' leading charity for people with serious mental health illnesses and their carers, providing a broad range of services from inpatient care to housing, employment, early intervention and carers' services. To cover all areas of Wales, Hafel is an organisation managed by the people with support and individuals whose lives have been affected by serious mental illness. And so these are the four organisations that come through. Obviously, the most important one, Support in Mind, Scotland. Uh, and that feeds into Mental Health UK. Now, you can get involved by donating, fundraising. And uh, we can uh, just uh, have a quick look at uh, what Mental Health uh, does by way of support groups. Um, and each support group is run by volunteers with experience of living with mental health problems. Groups are uniquely developed to care for the needs of local members and they reduce isolation that can come with mental illness and provide a safe space to talk openly without discrimination. Advice, mental health and money advice service provides UK-wide support to those living with mental health and money problems. The first service of its kind has helped thousands of people understand, manage and improve their financial situation as well as their mental health. Information. They provide information about mental health and mental illness as well as how to seek support. They have an ins on the inside information guides an estimated reach of 5.4 million people. And by turning this into a digital platform too, uh, they've been able to reach more people and tackle the myths about mental health problems. 
you can help them, you can get involved, and uh, certainly as a result of what uh, the Pure Gym are doing, uh, raising money. In fact, uh, before they started their circle ride, they'd already already raised £250,000. Now, that's quite a bit. If you want to help becoming a Mental Health UK partner, the partnership teams are on hand to help you through your journey and uh, discuss all needs about how to do that. You can call 0207-840-3038 or email partnerships at mentalhealthuk.org today. Now, that website again is mentalhealth-uk.org. And as you saw, they work with various different people, but there are also people and organisations in Aberdeen who are there to actually help. And uh, some of these include Penumbra and also include VSA. That's www.vsa.org.uk. And VSA operate uh, their arm for mental well-being through St Albans AUBINS Care Home. And it's a rehabilitation service for adults over the age of 18 with mental health problems. And that includes anorexia and is situated in the west end of Aberdeen. St Albans has eight individual rooms and provides 24-hour support. And the main reason why we included St Albans in this is because uh, Brian highlighted the issue of Emily Barclay, who wanted to embark on her role as a physiotherapist but she had anorexia which was so difficult for her and for her family and she spent long times in hospital and uh, after spending two years in hospital she uh, was uh, heard heard about St Albans and as a result of the love and the care that uh, she received there, she is able to move uh, to go on to Robert Gordon to study physiotherapy. And uh, she has attributed uh, this great success to the love and care that she obtained at St Albans. And for their part, St Albans have said that uh, Emily herself has done a lot of the work. It is really a two way process. So let's have a little look at some of the things that uh, they do and what and how they can actually help people. And the information is, is actually there. Uh, going to St Albans, you can go to our website and go to find out more about St Albans. Many of the individuals they support are quite independent and have varying interests. As a result, there are several activities that take place within the service which encourage individuals to get involved with group activities including walking, gardening, coffee and chat evenings, theme cooking nights, movie nights. Service users regularly plan day trips which have included visits to the Gordon Highlanders Museum, football matches at Pedodri, walks around Duthy Park, cinema visits, attending church groups. The service has links with several outside agencies and services and users often attend Ingegarth Community Centre where they can access pool tables and a fitness suite. Some service users attend an arts and crafts group walking group allotment visits provided by reach out and they have an occupational therapy service providing healthy minds sessions within the service which looks at lifestyles and healthy eating and there's some service users which have taken advantage of volunteering volunteering opportunities within and out with bsa a key contact at st albans is gail smith and her email is gail.smith at vsa.org.uk. G, capital G for Gail, capital S for Smith. And there's a dot in between, uh, vsa.org.uk. And they're based at 87 Anderson Drive in Aberdeen. Telephone number 01224 You can find that information. Uh, on our website, uh, certainly the key contact information at that. That brings us to the end of uh, the information that we've got for you today and our three community elements. We trust it's been a, a good time for you and uh, that you've got lots of out, of it, out of it. And we hope that you will let other people know about these services and indeed about our website. 
This is Gospel for Grampian, Gospel Community Radio for North Scotland, engaging, equipping and enabling communities to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. Now this programme will be available again as a podcast. An individual podcast will be going up online. It's taken a little bit longer. I had a few technical issues and uh, human issues this evening.